Hey babe, if you're ready to get groovy, you're gonna love today's episode. You wanna see? This is Laugh Cry DIY. I am your girl Katie, and we have been doing a lot of crying lately. The world has been very sad, I have been very depressed, so I decided that this week what we need on the channel is a hit of dopamine decor. If you don't know about dopamine decor, dopamine dressing, it's either dressing or decorating in bold colors, fun patterns, everything you need to brighten your deeply depressed soul. It's also been a while since I've done a straight easy dollar store DIY episode and you guys have asked me for tips for making your dollar store DIYs look less dollar store. So this week we're making three super easy, super simple, super fun and groovy pieces of decor and I'm gonna share a few tips along the way. So let's get happy or slightly less depressed. So everything we're doing today is very groovy. It's very 90s, which is very 60s. It's for my TikTok girlies, my colorful gaze. Now, I did not know what I wanted to do for this video. I actually went to the dollar store just looking for inspiration. And when I found this item, I instantly had the vision. I knew what we were gonna do and I knew what type of crafts we were gonna do today. Which brings me to tip one for dollar store DIY, which is build something from scratch. Now I know that sounds obvious, but this is what I mean. Like. A lot of times in dollar store crafting, people just do a one-to-one. -one. They just like find a planter and then they decorate it and still use it as a planter. I love to keep Pinterest inspiration boards. I love to comb the sites I like and just keep a general library of inspiration. So when I'm at the dollar store or when I'm thrifting, I will also just keep an eye on what the basic silhouettes are. I'm always looking for things that can be the base to add other things onto. Hence, when I saw this round mirror, I thought instantly, I wanna do a flower power daisy mirror. Then I went to the craft section, saw these dollar store little balsa rounds, and I was like, all right, well, instant pedal, we did it. Which brings me to tip two, which is change the color or the finish. So we are gonna paint these petals pink and orange. Fun fact, gold leaf is also another great finish to add to something. Another finish you can do is like a terracotta finish, mixing house paint and baking soda. That'll make something feel gritty and make it look like it's actually terracotta as opposed to plastic or glass. These colors are so fun, so 60s. And while those dry, I actually have a vintage blush from the 60s. You guys ready to die when you see the color of this blush? This is the most vibrant clown pink you could imagine. Super 60s. Would you guys like to see a video of just all my favorite fun decor and things in my home? Comment below. And if you think the only change we were gonna make was painting these, you don't know me at all. There's something else that we can do to make this really sassy. Tip three, add texture. So one of the secrets to good decor is adding texture to a space or a piece. If we just did this, totally simple and fine, but we can really elevate it and add a little bit more of a finished detail by adding some texture to this. And one of my favorite ways to do that is with dollar store stickers, especially these like round dot pearls or beads. You guys saw me do this in my gold frames video. We added like texture detail to frames. But for this one, we're gonna add a fun detail to these petals by trimming them in, by trimming them with these gold dots so that it adds a little more pop and pizzazz. So I have added this gold sticker trim here. I'm figuring out how far out and down I want them to be. So I think like that distance looks nice. And now I know exactly how far of a strip to cut and then I can do these all around. Genius. Boom. What's great is because these are stickers, you can like easily manipulate them or like re-stick them. You can also create this type of texture or detail um, with like hot glue gun or rhinestones or any sort of object like that. And now it's time to paint. Alrighty, we're gonna let these bad boys dry. We're gonna do a second coat and then we will be back. We're back, we're beautiful and we're dry. And we are just simply gonna do some hot glue to get these petals on. You could do E6000 if you want. When it comes time to put it up on the wall, you can just use a simple command strip. This is so cute, but you guys have to wait for your final reveals. Next up, we're gonna make some very cute storage. I was looking around the Urban Outfitters website and I saw this box. 
It is their vinyl lidded storage box and it comes in a few colors, including tie dye. Now we love storage and we love storage that is aesthetic, but I guarantee you, if you go to your local dollar store, go to the party supply wrapping paper section, you're gonna find a bunch of cool different gift boxes, such as this beauty right here. This is a very simple box that we are going to give a very hippie-licious makeover to. That is so dumb. And that brings me to tip four for dollar store crafting, which is add a pattern to something. You can hand paint, you can contact paper, you can decoupage wrapping paper or fabric onto something to give it a little more pattern and a little more pop. This is the easiest way to upgrade, customize, mix up any dollar store piece of decor you find. To start, we are gonna give it a base color paint in this beautiful sky blue. Oh baby, it's tie-dye time. And we're gonna go in with this gorgeous rainbow of paints I've mixed up. And we basically want this to be a pastel multicolor daydream. And to apply the color on, I am taking a magic eraser, snapping it in half, ripping it. That's giving me like a cool edge and texture. I'm actually gonna do that to a few pieces, kind of use a different piece for each color. And I'm just gonna go in and around and just start dabbing paint on. Just in random little spots. It's okay if it's a little bit translucent. That kind of gives you more of that layered effect. This is also a cool effect to do like on a wall and you're just stippling it on lightly all over and really irregularly. It also helps if you kind of make a little bit of like a starburst pattern here and there. Like, you know, those kind of like spidery web things that happen when you tie dye. Um, that's super cool and fun. You guys, this is so cool. So cool. Alrighty, our box is beautiful. It is dry. I did spray an acrylic sealer um, all over it. Don't know how much of a difference it made, but just for fun. Now, this box looks fun. It looks cute, but I still think there's a way that we can elevate it. Tip five, add a fun detail. So this box is super cute, super simple, but it can also kind of still just look like a random painted box. So how can we elevate it, make it look a little bit more intentional, make it look a little bit more bespoke? What better way than to add an actual little handle top? And I had on hand this little piece of hardware um, from a set that honestly I just haven't used. And I thought, why not add a cute little handle to the top? And so if it's sitting on a shelf, it just looks like a um, intentional piece of storage. Add legs, add a handle, add the bones of an enemy, I don't know. But something that just gives it a little extra oomph that makes it feel a little bit more elevated. That said, this handle is currently like a uh, little marble faux lacquer design and I want it to match so we're gonna go spray paint it. Alrighty, she is blue on top. That's cute but I do think that the blue alone stands out. So I'm just gonna do like tiny, tiny little uh, tie-dye marks on the top. You know, I'll be honest, I don't know if this is looking like tie-dye or like watercolor, but either way, I'm happy with it. And to find the center mark, I'm just going to X that out. Let's see if right in the center, if I can just stab this. All right. So this is what it looks like when this screw is fully tightened. So as you can see, there's a gap here. So I'm just using a bunch of little mini washers to fill in that gap and that way it'll sit tight. If you don't know, washers are just these little round metal rings. You've seen them before. Screwing her on. And you can see it's tight. You can see it's tight there, tight on top. And now you have to wait till the final reveals. We're gonna turn this jar into a candle. And this is tip six today for dollar store DIY, which is repurpose an object. You can turn a glass cup into a terrarium. You can turn a pencil holder into a planter. You can turn a baking dish into a tray. Now for today's little candle jar, I was very inspired by the checkerboard pattern we're seeing everywhere. At first I was considering doing stripes because I thought this would be a really fun way to mimic the classic Jonathan Adler vice jars, which are super cool, super groovy, and over $100 each. Jonathan Adler, we love your fun, colorful, whimsical designs, but we 
we cannot all comfortably afford them. But then on Urban Outfitters, I was seeing a lot of fun green and white checkerboard patterns, and I really liked that, so I decided that's what we're gonna go with. So I have just mixed up this beautiful lemon lime yellow green. And that brings me to tip seven for dollar store crafting, watch your lines. So the easiest tell for something that's dollar store is because it's usually like wonky, right? You need to watch your lines and you just need to be consistent and symmetrical. So for example, we could do a very hand painted vibe on this jar and we could make the checks all by hand. They would be inconsistent, but it would obviously be a very handmade pattern. Or we could be incredibly precise. You could use square stickers and you could perfectly tape off a beautiful, entirely symmetrical checkerboard pattern or you can do what we're gonna do, which is stamp a pattern on. So whatever you do, whatever your aesthetic is, just make sure your lines are very consistent. So here's what I did. I grabbed a magic eraser and I cut a perfect cute little stamp. Magic erasers are perfect to use as stamps because they're porous enough to absorb paint, but they're really flat and smooth. So when you put the paint on, you're not gonna get the same kind of like inconsistent stipply pattern that you will on a kitchen sponge. The first stamp is the scariest. All right. Cute. Put your paint on a flat surface instead of dipping all the way in. That way you can kind of blot on and off and kind of get a sense of how much is actually on it. You wanna see? Always fun. As you can see, it's a little bit stippled, a little bit light. So let's go back over and darken that up. Might even do a third coat and that's okay. All right, we have our beautiful candle jar. I did a few coats of the paint on this. I also went back over with a toothpick and I kind of just cleaned up any lines. So I feel pretty good about it. And now it is time to make this an actual candle. And that brings me to tip number eight, strip something for parts. So we are taking a dollar store candle and we're gonna melt it down and put it in this jar. You guys have seen me strip other things for parts. So like when I made my beaded planter, I took the beads from a bird toy. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy something whole than to actually source the individual parts from a craft store. To buy three dollar store necklaces and use those beads instead of spending $10 on a tub of beads at the craft store. I looked up a candle making kit at a craft store. It was $31 to make two candles. So let's melt this baby down. Um, so we're just doing water and we're just gonna put this in. I'm also putting it in from the beginning because you want it to kind of like get used to heating up and not break all at once. So let's give that however long it needs to boil and melt down. Ooh, we're melting, baby. The wax is totally melted and it has left the wick and the little base for the wick. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna dip this in and I'm gonna drop a little bit of wax in the bottom and then I'm gonna pull out the stem and the little base and I'm gonna put it right over that melted wax I just did. Now you can reuse it, cool. And I'm just wrapping the wick around a little paintbrush just so that it can stand up straight. Okay, that pour was like a little bit shallow and I do have these wax melts that I just need to get rid of. So you could melt down a second candle if you needed more wax. Um, I'm just gonna throw these in. Candles drying. And now I think you're ready for your final review. Well, you guys, I gotta say, I did not know that $10 worth of dollar store supplies could bring so much joy to my inner tween, but I am super obsessed with how these turned out. So I hope I gave you a little bit of inspiration. I hope you guys found the tips helpful. Let me know what type of decor you're obsessed with lately. Let me know if there's something you want me to dupe and I will try my best to bring your dollar store dreams to life. So until next time, if you're feeling depressed, I am too.